Hello and welcome to Let's Make Tracks. It's finished. Welcome back to the channel. So, this is it. My entry into the Hornby Diorama Challenge 2023. I didn't fit this through, this is gonna be a bit cumbersome, really. <laughs> anyway, starting from the front, working back in. We have the street outside the station. All the street lamps are all lit up. Got some nice crossings from eBay. Um, I was going to get a road stencil kit from, I think it's Knock, the company, but um, it hasn't arrived in time, so everything line-wise on the road is done by hand. And also what we have, we have a bit of a dilapidated wooden fence that separates the street from the car park. I've added a little bit of graffiti on there. I've purposely made it not look good, because, you know, graffiti. The local... Um, preferred descriptive. So we had the car park. So I'm, I got some motorbikes from eBay. They're fantastic. I love these. Um, some 3D printed custom railway signs. I use them as my actual railway advertising. Um, I did manage to get hold of two 1970s cars for the life of me. I can't remember what make they are at this particular moment. So you're going to have to forgive me that I'm not a car person. Then moving into the platform, I've decided to go with the narrative that um, this area here used to be a bay platform. So again, you won't be able to see it from there. I'll have to do some close-ups. But on this lamp, these lamps and these lamps, I have platform numbers. So one, two, and on this side, I do have a sign for platform three. So I install, well, I had assistance installing uh, the flower bed just along here on what would have been the bay platform. I'm really happy with how this has turned out. Okay, then we've got, we do have some figures on this side. We've got a chap on a mobility scooter here and a railway worker holding a access ramp to get on the carriage. Uh, the mobility scooter and the ramps I got from West Hill Wagon Works and they're really good because I wanted to include the whole disability access that Heritage Railways are promoting these days. Um, all the other figures are from a set on eBay. Um, you've got the standing and the sitting variants. Um, they are random bags from what I recall. Uh, might have overlooked this slightly, the station building, model lux kit uh, for a West Malling station, which isn't actually far from the Spa Valley Railway actually. Lights are installed in there, but so this can fit inside the storage box that I've mentioned before. This actually comes away just like the station building. And that all fit back in with Lego pieces and some shaven down nails to act as conductors and the lights still function. Hopefully you can see that from over there because I'm filming during the day. Uh, footbridge from uh, Into the Wood Laser, I believe that was. And then on this side of the platform, uh, more figures, lamps. Um, I've included the Model U figures just down here. So over here we have uh, Richard from um, New Junction with his dog Lulu. Uh, who else do we have? Just here uh, we have uh, the Reverend W. Audrey, famous for his uh, Thomas the Tank Engine, or more specifically the Railway Series children's books. Uh, somewhere, I can't see that far somewhere along here uh 
put in her rubbish in the bin is a Jenny E. Kirk figure. Again, I can't see her from here, so you'll have to excuse me. Um, up this end, we have Kathy Millet. So Kathy and Jennifer were both on the uh, Great Model Railway Challenge as contestant and judge, and both have self-titled YouTube channels. And somewhere, again, I can't see, not from Model U, but just from the generic random bag of figures, I have attempted to paint myself and uh, my partner Kirsty. Um, again, I can't see from here, but you'll be able to sit bottom from a mile. She's a very bright red hair. So uh, that is everything on the platform. So moving backwards into the yard. Uh, so I've got oil spill, uh, the Hatton's oil spill kit, pretty much in this entire area. As uh, with Heritage Railway yards, uh, the ground is usually entirely black. So that's done throughout the entirety. Uh, there's some fresh piles of ash that have been unblackened, dotted around. Uh, there's even a few piles of uh, cinder scatter just to break up the uh, flat black appearance, although it is still black. You get what I mean. And there's a little pile of wood over here, some uh, 3D printed pallets. pallets. That's still a bit loose and uh, some broken up matchsticks. So me doing this now, I've just seen that I need to put a bit more glue on there, glue that down a bit better. Um, there's a barrel down here, but you can't see that. Barrel. Let me move uh, these for a second. Oh, I got a new addition for my birthday. I got a little bit of money to spare. And I also used my uh, hobby reward points and I got myself an 08, a little bronc. And I couldn't help, but I had to go with the BR Blue. So I know everyone's buying this particular version at the moment, with some exceptions for the Great British Rail Freight and the uh, red versions. But um, this one suits my uh, what I'm going for a little bit better. Even though out of the three of them available, I think only one of them is still in existence, Molly. Um, I forget which depot she currently works at, but. Um, as far as livery is concerned, this one suited me better. Anyway, so I've done security fence down here, also from eBay. Um, I've broken up the join a little bit with uh, a couple of trees. I don't know if you can tell they're trees anymore though. Uh, a little bit of um, bush. Forget what you call the stuff, but a little, you know the stuff, a bag of like, bushy material comes away in little clumps. But anyway, that's kind of a, a boundary line, I suppose, and the other side's a bit neglected. And it works really well with this back scene, which um, I got from Gage Master. I'm not sure what gauge it was intended for, this back scene, but I'm pretty sure it's not for TT. So, it, it works. I mean, I would have preferred to have got one maybe in N scale, so it looked like there was a bit more depth there. But I think as far as blending in goes, it's not too unreasonable. So I'm happy with that. And this is removable. I can unscrew this entire board and take it away if I wanted to. So it's something that could be updated in the future. Should I decide to go a slightly different direction with that. Right, the, um, the crane has its chain now. Although I have noticed running locomotive part, locomotives past the chain, uh, where the chain dangles, it's catching on uh, coupling rods and so forth. Not coupling rods. Valve gear. It's catching on valve gear. So I've had to put a little pin down there and kind of pull the chain out of the way a bit and it seems to be behaving itself at the moment. But uh, realistically speaking, uh, these lines probably should have been slightly more over. So, and the shed pushed back as well, but... Well, hey, even after doing this for years and years and years, I'm, I'm still learning by mistakes. Right, then the shed. <coughs> uh, 
So, as discussed before, this comes away. This comes away. Hold it. Okay, here we go. Uh, little light show. Oh, come on. It's because I'm trying to be gentle, that's why. I haven't done it from this angle before. Right, so that comes away. All the lights are installed inside the shed with the pins picking up power from the uh, disassembled connection blocks. And inside we have all the, or at least most of, the details you would find in the engine shed at the Spa Valley Railway. Now hopefully you can see down here that my arc welder element is uh, doing its job quite well. Uh, the only issue I'm having with it is when the lights are on at the shed, it's kind of um, dulling down the effect a bit. So I'm not sure whether I should purposely uh, deactivate the two LEDs that are directly over this module just so it flashes up a bit better. I'm not sure. But yeah, so we've got the two arc welder figures here. They're from model U. They came in a pack of three and I've got the other guy at the other end of the smoke box just here. And most of this is from West Hill Wagon Works. Uh, that's just uh, tissue paper on top of a coach. Uh, maybe we'll go into that at a later date, but there's plenty of videos on YouTube at the moment about how to do that. So, West Hill Wagon Works, we've got quite a bit in here. Uh, the bit I was most anticipating for and I honestly thought there was a point I wasn't going to get it, was the uh, lift injects. So they're installed, painted. Um, I've included a bit of uh, wire there to simulate the control cable. Um, I could suspend a, um, a carriage of this size, but I would need to, one, uh, detach the wheels to add realism, and two, I would have to put some kind of beam across between the two jacks although they do function properly as lifting jacks if you push them closer together so that the um the little clasps ledges even do go under the coach and then it you know looks like it's actually lifting it the problem with that is if i glued them down in that position i wouldn't be able to run any locomotives or rolling stock down that piece of track again so the compromise I've come with is to put them just out of range so that locomotives and everything can still get through. But then if I were to suspend a piece of rolling stock, then just use a stick or something that I can easily hide. And then I'd get a little bit more height on them as well, make it look a bit better. So that's the lift inject. You've got the uh, locomotive, what's the name on the packet? Inspection steps, I think they're called. So I painted mine yellow to match the ones they have at the Spa Valley. Uh, we've got some oil drums, uh, I believe they're from eBay. Uh, we've got some pallets with brake blocks, they're quite nice. And we've got some other pallets with uh, axle boxes. So for me this scene it was important to have uh, parts of locomotives and rolling stock knocking about. Um, the locomotive boiler on its own is pretty good but on its own, it probably wouldn't have done the trick. And that was from more view models, which I mentioned a few, quite a few episodes ago. Uh, what else have we got down here? I did get the shelving unit, which came with the forklift from eBay. Unfortunately, the space I gave given myself to do everything along the back here uh, was insufficient for the shelf. So I've literally had to cut it down the middle with the Dremel, bolt butterfly it out, and now it simulates a full shelf unit along the back wall here. So there's, again, there's not much I can do with this back wall. One, because the view would be blocked by the time I suspend the coach here, so it's pointless. And again, the space. And also, I've installed um, an additional piece of uh, brick paper. Now, I put a photo up of what it looked like before and to me it just kind of broke the uh, the scene a bit to take the entire building off and then being able to see over the hills. So I thought if I reinstalled a wall for when I take the shed off, then
then you don't lose as much of the illusion. And there's a couple of like notice boards attached as well. And I believe that's everything. Yeah. So that is what I have been up to. Again, sorry for the uh, lack of videos, but um, with the deadline approaching for the diorama challenge, I felt that I didn't have much time to uh, build models and produce these videos. So obviously I took a bit of a break from the videos, but now that I've got to the, uh, the finish line, Hornby have now decided to extend the deadline. As you do. So I've got a little bit more time to play with even though I don't actually need it. So this is my final update video on the diorama challenge. The next video you will get from me will hopefully be my official entry video which will be a far more detailed tour of uh, this particular module and a story to um, basically explain what's going on in this diorama. But anyway, thank you for joining us again. Sorry for not producing videos in a while. Uh, my name's Peter, and I will see you in the next one. Oh, and uh, when you do see this, hopefully in the Hornby magazine, please, please, please vote. Um, it would mean the world to me to not only enter this, but actually win or just come in the top three or come anywhere respectably in the rankings and it has become apparent that some of most of you are watching my videos but not liking or subscribing naughty naughty it's uh, no charge to you of course it's absolutely free as many youtubers like to point out um, it does help my channel out quite a lot if um, the likes and the subscribes are in it shows youtube that people are actually interested um, please like and subscribe. And when you see this module appear in Hornby, uh, whatever platform they decide to display it on, please vote for it. Um, that's all I can ask really at this time. So thank you for watching and I will see you again next time. Bye. -bye.